ang galing in my head I'm like how many times are you able to reinvent yourself but the reality is just once because you give your life to God and then he'll mold you exactly kung san kung san siya magoglorify be used of the lord oh oy. you know i i will be open to whatever you know uh, right. uh, as long as i feel that there is there's honesty and integrity and you know all of that and really and sincerely benito and i can i say it benito um i used to be the one that was fervent and you know on, but he would be um like a sunday christian right. he'd go yeah. there but uh, And I used to say, Lord, the man, why is his territory so far? Ventura, yung territory niya, you know. Um, and I would say, you know, his his safety, his this, his that. Unbeknownst to me, God had a plan. And this guy who is a talk radio fan, talagang radio siya. For some reason, he was enticed to listen to Christian radio. And then he began to. And now our he, this guy is so born again. He's so fervent, you know, and that's my answered prayer from God. Yes. I really wanted that. Ikaw naging faithful ka lang, and then si God na bahala, di ba? Yeah. He took care of it, and now <laughs> there's not a day that we leave, eat, separate, and not hold hands and pray. It's every day. Welcome to the Paco's Place Podcast. And the podcast will begin in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ladies and gentlemen, Proud to have her. It's her first podcast. Ever. Yes, <laughs> Miss Becca Godinez. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Paco. Hello. Been a while. It's been a long while, yeah. but but uh, we're Facebook friends. So yes, we are. At least I see you there. But we don't friend each other. No. Oh, never mind. You, you know what? But I mean, um, for some reason, every time I see you, it's like I just saw you yesterday. Ganon yun dat. Ganon yun dating. Yeah. When I met you the first time, and that I was super impressed with your drumming, was at a church. Yes, you remember that. Yes, I do. And then the next time I saw you was um, Puente Hill Mall. Yes, when I was in a bind because they asked for a number, and I said, "Paco, can you play?" And you did, and you saved my life. But you know what, Mina Man, the first time you came on my radar. And by the way, shout out to uh, Becca's husband Benito and my mom and her mom who's here in the studio also. So ito nakakatawang kwento. Oh, sige. Crush kita nung maliit ako eh. <laughs> as 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 in as in I would tell my mom to buy uh, the Quest or magazine which had Voltes 5 and everything okay. in it. And then my mom would have a what was it a magazine or or whatever that was that you were on it. And I would ask my mom, "Mom, who is she? Who is she?" And wow, yes, what year was that? Oh my God, that was seventy. <laughs> Holy guacamole! But you were you were you were at the top of your 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 game. I did not um, actually television. I I did television co-hosting before I left for the U.S. Mm. Um, in uh, I came to school. 1975 can you imagine so before that i was a recording artist for vicor when it really was victor and orly they have vicor Vi- no? vicor diba and so but the contract that we drafted with my dad it said that if i decided to have my education in the us or wherever that the contract would be null and void So I just really was i was doing theater and all that and i didn't know why i had to do this why i i didn't like being dumb So I said I wanted to go to school. So I came here, and I took two years, and I right. graduated with an associate in theater arts. Mm. And then you, did you go back? I went back, uh, and then Repertory Philippines got me. Wow! And so, but after a while, because every season one, two, three plays musicals, I burned out. So uh, in 1980, I will say 79 or 80, I was in Club Filipino. And with my friend Stella Laurel, and we were sitting there. It was like I don't know, early evening, and this group of guys were yakking. And then may may lumapit, and uh, he said, "Hi," he said to Stella. And then he looked at me and he says, "Weren't you my artist?" <gasps> and I said, "Ah," uh, because I didn't really, you know. So um, he, I said, he, I said yes, I was, big, but I explained to him what. He goes, "Do you have any songs?" And because he knew that Stella wrote songs also, and I said, "Yeah, I do." As a matter of fact, I delved into uh, songwriting when I came to the states, and um, 
so he said let's meet we met at the laurel house on shaw boulevard <coughs> and then uh he uh, stella started playing her songs and i played on the piano too maybe oh, too. Yeah. and he said i'm not a songwriter um i'm not a lyricist uh, by any stretch of the imagination but i can tell when a song is a hit and he said that's a hit something i had played for him which i had entitled sam um but George Canseco yes. rewrote it into Tagalog and it became Lalaking Makisig. Can you imagine, no? I know, just... just Random. I, Wait, who was the person that saw you in Clue? Was it Tito Orly? Or? No, it was Vic. It was Boss Vic? Boss Vic. Boss Vic was there. I don't know what he was doing there. He had a meeting of sorts and he had to go to the banyo. And to get to the banyo, he had to pass by the table that Stella and I were in. Oh my God. And that's how that started, the recording. So I, I recorded... 1980 i think 1980 and uh we finished the entire album and <laughs> and then a guy from uh Wea records who was Aust his main base was hong kong but i think he was english or i don't know what he was um he was looking for rock bands mm. and at that time walang cell phone walang Wala. so they had to drive all the way to clark i think or subic i think they were in subic and then i get a call the telephone pa noon was nying, nying, nying. <laughs> Seryoso yan? Yun. So they were there and they called the house. And I don't know who it was that, that was talking to me. I don't know if it was Vic. But they said, hey, um, Mr. Ewing would like to meet you. He heard uh, your song, Missing You Again. Right. And then he said, you know, can you meet him tomorrow at the hotel? Excuse me. Um so we did we met outside of the hotel i was with my mom and he said you know your your songs are great your album is great but i would like to add a song okay he, uh, then he said i'm i'm uh, i'm gonna be going to hong kong i said oh i have a show there in two weeks great so we went to hong kong and i went to the office of where warner brothers electra atlantic, atlantic. Yeah. and so i went and he said i think this song will be good for you and it was shining <gasps> Oh my God. Shining was a last minute addition to the album. And he said that it had, it was a hit na daw sa Australia. And he said, but it's dying, you know, and I think that it could be revived. So he, he gave me the song through Vic and I recorded it. And so there was a second pressing of my, of yes. my. Yes, kasi na-press na eh. So yung malaking CD yeah. natin. No? <laughs> yung LP. <laughs> LP. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that's how, that's how that happened. Now, your con if this was in 1980, who were your contemporaries? Um, because this was this was the dawning of OPM. Eh? Yes. Dial, dial. Uh, what was first? But was it Vicor or Black Gold? Vicor and then Black, Black Gold. Gold, and right? I became Black Gold also. Right. After. Um. Uh. What was the question? I'm sorry. The question is the cinema contemporaries sa OPM. Ah, okay. Um. Uh, at the time when I came in, I was Bagetsky, you mm -hmm. know. So I was just Kolehiyala. Sinaling po sa ako yeah. kina Celeste, kina Anthony, you know, all these people. But I didn't really have an age group yet because I didn't belong. By the time I got in, uh, Lea Navarro, yes. Kula Desma, Joey Albert. You know, those were my... Si, totoo yun, Jay, eh, no? Because last night, JJ and I were talking. No. Ay, matatawa na naman si Benito. So, <laughs> sabi ni JJ, kasi we had rehearsals. Uh -uh. So, sabi, oh my God, Becca Godinez. And tapos doon, sabi namin, o oh, nga, eh, no? Ganda-ganda ni Becca, no? Tapos, sino pa crush natin noon? Si Celeste Legazmi, lahat ka. <laughs> Leo Navarro, yeah. di ba? And, and we were kids. We were like, like, 80, 81. We were 10. That's how old I am. No! <laughs> Sinasabi ko lang because during my, now that I am, I'm 52, yung mga bagets na, na 30, sila yung, ay, kuya pa ako, nung, <laughs> nung 6 ako, nung 7 ako, walang hiya ka. <laughs> Tita Becca, hello? <laughs> I go, stop! Just Becca. So what, so, okay, so now, so Celeste was there, um, andyan yung mama, mamang sorbetero, andyan no. si Shetem, te amo. I diba? love Yan yung mga panahon na Nonong yun. Nonong eh. Pedero yun. Yes. Ang composer noon. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. So what was it like nung era ninyo? Well, let me tell you something. Um, I actually was tapped um, out of high school. Uh -huh. There was what a... Was, where, what school was this? Marinol. I knew Actually, it. I studied in Mindanao. 
And in the last two years of the school there, the Marinol sisters came in because they wanted to raise the educational level. The teaching was missionaries because it was a lumber mm. area, you yes. know. Uh, so when we uh, wanted, my, when dad was transferred, we went to Marinol. And one of the things that we had was uh, Christian, ano yung, uh, Christian movement with young people and you yung play, ano, ah, oh my god uh, wait, wait. I forget, forget the name of it but uh, they did one for for one of the classes and they yeah. hel- heard me play the guitar and sing a song and uh, so they said oh my god Becca you know all of this and I, I just I was just playing the guitar a few months later there was a program for the entire high school sorry for the entire high school and nobody wanted to go back to class so they were going, Becca, Becca. You know, they started, and I said, are you nuts? You know, but I went up and they said, can you sing a song? And I sang <coughs> Rainy Days and Mondays. Oh, Rainy so, Days and Mondays. Always get me down, uh, car- Carpenters. Okay. So uh, the next day, Saturday, I was in the garden. So Green Hills kami nakatira. Uh, nagring yung doorbell. And the, the yaya came and she goes, um, Rita, si, ano, senorita, senorita, whatever, may, may naghahanap sa'yo. I said, who? Um, Desa daw yung pangalan. I go, Desa? Desa Bacalls uh, was a lady, uh, a, cla- a schoolmate that uh, traveled the school bus with us. Okay. And so I get outside and there's a chedeng with an American guy and and a lady and then Desa. He says, these are my parents. They're producers of television. I went, yeah, and the and the lady looks at me and she goes, you're exactly what we're looking for. Oh and I went, God. ah, you know, and she goes, do you think your parents would mind if we did a screen test on Channel 13 in San Juan? It was a very small black and white oh television God. station. And I went, San Juan sa Piquevara. Oh my, ay, alam ko pa yun. May isang tower doon. Yes, yun. yes, yes. And so I said, ah, uh, you know, and so I went, mom wasn't home, dad wasn't home. I said, do they, pakisabi lang kay mami, may screen test ako. <laughs> Yeah, so I went and they put me on a stool and they had a camera and they said, can you sing? Okay, so I sang a little bit and then they said, can you look at the camera and smile? So I went, (laughs) I didn't know. I didn't know how to be in front of a camera. And then, so I went home. I said, oh, I flubbed that, you know. But actually it led to um, the Rebecca Godinez Christmas special and then another Rebecca Godinez something or other and one of my guests for yes. for for the i think for the christmas one um Ryan Kayabyab was still a totoy um you wow. know amongst a group of UP singers wait 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 visit abateservices.com for fast medical transcription service this podcast episode is brought to you by AB Music Creative so you you accomplished two things number 1 you were able to land your your christmas special and number 2 Natuto kan tumakas. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I did. Sabihin mo kay mami. <laughs> yeah. Do you, did you have any siblings or do you have any siblings? I do. My older sister Pam. Where where, where was Pam when when this was happening? Pamela had her own group oh. of, of friends and people. Then my younger brother William and then the youngest time they so were, you just left the house, huh? It did. And to think Green Green Hills guys and yan. May security guard yan sa yeah. ano, huh? Yeah. But I, what she said she did, see Dessa, is she said, my poor parents, I took them the whole route of the bus oh my God. to be able to find my house. <laughs> so, sinundan niya talaga, you know? And so, that was my first exposure sa wow. television. What did your dad say when he found out that there was an opportunity? They, they hadn't, they hadn't really said anything yet. And so, when I did the specials, they came to talk to dad and mom. You know, to say, you know, we would like to cultivate, you know, blah, 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 because because we're trying to develop, uh, et cetera, this television thing. So I did do, I actually had Coco y Laurel oh my God, as yeah. a guest. Galing. I had um, the uh, Aldegar sisters yes. <laughs> as a guest. The director was um, Silos, Tiny Silos. Tiny, okay. Tiny is the father of the, father of the husband of Alma, Ronnie. Oh, universe. Si Debbie is a friend of mine. Oh, naman. okay. Yung pang, pangalawa, pangatlo, or may, may anak din siya. Ron, me, me know not that part. <laughs> basta, basta, dun siya namatay, kasawa niya si Debbie. Hi, uh, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Yeah, so... Um, I met Tiny, yeah. I even yeah. met Tiny. 
you know, he said to me, you know, Becca, it takes, we, we, we do everything to make money because he needed to make money. And I remember one of the things he said, I, I, I do commercial jingles. I said, really? Is it something I know? He goes, yes. And he, I said, which one? Basket butas butas. <laughs> there was an ad for basket butas butas and I knew it. And that's the only way I knew how who he was as a director. Resume, but he yeah, was, and and we did some really good work. Um, after that, uh, wow. Si Tiny, no? Haba yung kwento. No, 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 go ahead. This is your podcast. Pero nakakatawa kay Tiny going back, para na may shout out ka lang the way he talks. Uh, Paco, Paco. Uh, <laughs> Oh no 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 no! Don't don't go there! Don't 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 go there! <laughs> He's so funny. I uh, he was just very serious with me. Oh okay, with you us know? he was very like we were kids, so yeah, very serious. No no no! I want this angle. How this angle? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> He had cigarettes, yeah. you know, um, that did him in actually yeah. the cigarettes. But after that, um, Krabi, no, Coco Laurel, Tiny Silos, yeah. Ryan there Kayabian. Was, there was a young guy, I can't remember his name, but he was he was like an up and coming young kid. I, then he disappeared. Uh, after that, so I went to school and everything, and then. Uh, wala, wala ka love team? No. No. Uh, the next thing was uh, channel BBC was going to open up. Right. And BBC Two. Right. BBC uh-huh, Two. See? Yeah. So uh, some people asked if they could come to the house and there were three or four of them. And they said, we'd like to talk to your dad and we want to see if he would allow you. Because I was a Yeah. So we'd like to know if, if you, they would allow, he would allow you to host the opening of the BBC. So um, I said, I looked at my dad, he said, yeah, okay. So it was Lulette Moran, uh, myself, the, he's, a, he's a mestizo um, folk singer, guitar. He acts now. Um, gosh, he I acts can't. now? Yeah, he's an actor now. No, not Cesar Montano. Huh? No, 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 older, older. older. And so anyway, so... I said Cesar Montano Sr. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> In there. So... Uh, we we did the show and then I know that Lulette was not there because she was in Europe somewhere. So it was myself, two guys, and I can't remember who else. And then the next guy, the next night, because four nights yon. Yung pangalawang night, tatlo na lang kami. Oh. Second, dalawa na lang kami, you know. And then on the last night, they said, we want to talk to your dad again. <laughs> and so they said, Mr. Godinez, we would like Becca to host a noontime variety show. And they wanted it to go uh, opposite of Ariel Ureta and Tina Revilla. Yes. So it was called Together We Offer, TWO. Um, so I said I didn't want to host a daily show. So they got me for like three night, uh, three mm. three lunches and then another girl. But you were in school. I, mm, what year was that? Yeah. I had just, it was, was seven, it? 72, 73? Martial Law, after oh, Martial yeah, Law. Okay. So I was doing theater and that was, I was in school, but I already said to dad, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't belong here. I don't belong in the college. And he agreed for my sister and I to take a secretarial course so that I could act at night. Kaling, oh. He said yes. And later on, years later, he said it was actually the counselor at the college who, he, who talked to me and said, you don't belong here, blah, blah. Only years later did I find out my dad pala went. Huh? My dad went to talk to her and said, did you tell my daughter <laughs> that she doesn't belong here? And she goes, yes, sir, I did. It's very rare to see a young lady who is sure about what she wants to do. Galing. And she doesn't belong here. Galing. I did. Yeah, it was good. That was a really, really good thing. And so I did that. I did that television thing and I was doing theater. Um, and then in 74, Five. Wow, I'm dating myself. Yeah. In '75, my aunt Helen uh, had flown in to Manila, and she said, "You know, Billy Becca wants to study. Why doesn't she live with me in California? I'll look for a school for her, etc." And so off I went, January 1975. And, and you had a contract na here, no? Wala I had pa. a contract in with, Manila yeah, with, with Vicor, Vicor. <clears throat> and and Null and Void. Yeah, at the time. Null and Void was suspended, lang. Null and Void. So you, when you saw, when you saw, wala na akong contract. Oh, so chika chika na lang kayo chika, ni Boss chika. Vic. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. 
He's a good salesman then, He's no? He's very good. Kasi, the song that I sang on that first recording was One Way Road to Fame by Joe Marie Chan. Wow. Yeah, um, I don't remember the guy who made it famous, but yeah, it was One Way Road. Wow. Ganun, no? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, when I when I came back, actually in 76, I received a telegram from from uh, Sanaida Amador. Amador. Yeah. In 75, I won the role in California in in Fullerton uh over 120 girls I won the role of Anita I I auditioned for it and I won the role for that and you know they heard about it sa Manila and then in 76 she sent a telegram, telegram. oh telegram pa. anyway she sent a telegram and she said uh want you to play the role of um Agnes Gooch in Mame and by that time, I was already doing my classical voice. And wow. Agnes Gooch, she steals the show with the last yeah. note. No? And so that was my introduction back to theater, Sa Manila. Krabe, still single at this point. Yes. Yes, many years single. Where were you? I thought you had a crush on me then. Yeah. You were two. <laughs> no, no, no. 76, was, I, was, uh, I was five. <laughs> Benito, oh. Diva, <laughs> the malabas si pagka playboy ko five palang. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay, and then and now you you were having fun doing all of this. That was this was a precursor. This was the golden age of solo artists. The eighties was the golden age yes. of of solo artists. Yes. What was it like? I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, I remember, I remember as a kid walking into broadcast city. Yeah. As a kid, when I was like grade seven, grade six, grade in seven. Bohol Avenue? No, where was no, Broadcast Tandansora, City? Tandansora. Tandansora. Yeah, 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 I guess there, there you go. Tapos, um, lumapit ako ng, lumapit ako kay, pumunta ako sa patok na patok. Sino yun? Ariel Ureta. Ah, Ariel, yes. I'm not sure if Tito Fritz was the director, Fritz and Fante. Another one, Fritz. And, 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 narinig ko lang conversation na Fritz had a crush on my dad. So I used that as a get kid, in. nagpasama ako sa driver niya, and then, na, niligaw ko talaga yung sarili ko sa labas, like, I'm going to Fritz Infante. And, and sinabi ko talaga kay Tito Fritz, Tito Fritz, I'm the son of Sunny Ares Pacochag. Oh my God! <laughs> so I go, can I perform on TV? He said, yes! Yes! And then me, and I brought Caloy De Leon, who is the son of, the uh, oh, the apo of, Donya Sisang of LVN. Right. I brought him. I brought my brother and another guy. Ay, yung brother-in-law ni, ni Tiny Silos. I brought him. We were kids. And sumayo kami ng YMCA sa... <laughs> that was my first stab. Presentado talaga. Yes. And yun yung kaya ko, kaya ko nabanggit. Because I was a kid looking into the 80s and what showbiz could be. But you were there. So, sinetap ko lang, what was it like from your lens being there was it magulo was no, it no actually <laughs> it was it was um it, it, looking back okay it was it was a young uh industry it was a young industry a lot of people had opportunity you know and uh, and the opportunity was not just people like me i mean some pagita guessed that her first television thing was my show you know so i was able to to also help other people, you know, come in. But it was, to me, an age of innocence, really. It was really all about getting the fans and getting the show going. None of these technical right. blah, blah, blah. You know, it was really about singing. It really was about entertainment, you know. And uh, I, I was just blessed, you know, in a sense that I didn't struggle too hard because I really... I'm sorry, it sounds like a bag of hot air, but I really am good as a host. And so I had a lot of hosting television shows. It was just, it was nothing that seemed... Uh, Pilet. Hindi, hindi. Yung parang natural lang na pumasok yeah. ako doon, you know? And then what Viker did is they would make me guest all these shows and then sing songs. The negative that resulted from that is I never got to do live concerts. Because you were busy doing television. However, when when uh, Mina, the wife of Vic, she says, Becca, I want you to perform. So I went to The Flame. Naku. The Flame on on, <laughs> on Dewey Boulevard. I was going to say Dewey Boulevard, Dewey Boulevard, which is now Rojas Boulevard. Right. Okay. It was still Dewey Boulevard. <laughs> and I remember going, and my first show, I was going to make a whopping 1,500 pesos. 
but I had a full band behind me. Um, and then uh, my dad came because it was my dad and mom, and I don't know who else was there. And my voice was paus. Oh, and Lord. Voice. And it was my first, right? So after a while, I'm talking, very softly talking to preserve the, the voice. Um, sabi ni daddy, excuse me, la, ba, language. And he goes, I don't know how you can be there and smiling. I'm going to make oo in my pants <laughs> from my nerves. How can you do that? Sabi niya ganon. So I said, dad, I, there's nothing else I can do. I just have to perform. Right. you know. And I got up there and that's when I realized something God given, you know, it was just one of those things. I knew when to back away from the mic. I knew when I had to, you know, and I, I passed the night. And so 1,500, oh, wow. one year later, it was 10,000 a night. And that was already considered oh, yeah. pretty good, you know. Um, Hanggang so, ngayon, by the way, it's still 10,000 uh, for, for the whole band. <laughs> <laughs> 2020 for 10,000 in the Okay. Anyway, so that was my introduction to doing live shows. Wow. And uh, then with that experience, then people started asking me to do the hotel shows, you know, yes. guesting here, guesting there. But it's not the way that it is now. You know, I was there when Martin did his first University of Life, huge, 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 huge concert at the mm -hmm. time. First time that a Filipino artist... Um, did that kind of a yes. show, you know. Asawa ko noon si Morris, Albert. And mm -hmm. we had a very high, you know, very good studio. And um, Morris... What was the name of this studio again? Tasha Records. Yes, I remember that. Tasha Records. And you know it? Yeah. So Tasha Records and Tapes is my daughter's name. Oh. Tasha, yeah, Tasha. And uh, so we had an Allen and Heath board that was designed for Morris. It was flown in from London. Was this the year on the right track concert? No. Yes. I knew it. Yeah. Sa mga sabi ko na nga ba, alam ko na. Where did you see it? No. No, no, no. I, 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 uh, uh, you were too young. Yeah, I was too young. But, but then again, I was very inquisitive with yes. regard to, that's why I knew about Morris. I knew about. So, so Jaime, my brother. Yeah. Um, used to be my totoy brother that would go with me to Subic and all that and track, two track, <laughs> two track, uh, you know, for the, for minus oh one, God. you know. I used to perform sa, sa Clark, you know, um, for the servicemen. And then they liked me, so they kept asking me back. It hones your talent, right? Yes. Years later, uh, Jaime ended up being musical director for a concert for an artist and he had an eight track, but he was already doing that. And now it's like, He's doing MOA, he's doing, you know, he does all the big things. But um, that that uh, introduction to that kind of music, uh, my first experience a big concert was Jaime was, was going to do the sound for Martin. Jaime designed with my dad the first JBL speakers that were hanging. Yeah, the array. Yes, I know that. It is now a JBL uh, design. And when there is a huge JBL event, my brother is flown in. He's... They use him as a, like a thank you. Is he still in the Philippines? Ba? Yes, he's the only one there now. And he does all of the big shows. He does. All of them. Mm -hmm. um, but but that was it. Jaime was there and Morris was there helping Jaime. And then we said, we got to go. The concert's going to start na. Alis na tayo. Right. And as we were leaving, going to the front, you're going, you're going, Gina, everybody. You're go Why are you going? You know. And so we get to the car and Morris says, I can't do this to my bro. So we came back. And the sound engineers for Martin's You're on the Right Track was my brother Jaime and Morris. Grabe, no? Galing, no? Yeah. yeah. You, you know what? Ang, ang maganda rito. Let's go there. Because you, you elevated the space with regard to... <sighs> Iba yung ano eh, When you elevated, you elevated the, the audio experience. Eh. Mm. What was the conversation behind the scene? How did you think about investing in it to, to make it happen? Um, Morris had a worldwide hit, Feelings. Yes. Uh, and he had other songs uh, that became number one hits. Gonna Love You More by, who's Gonna Love You More? Um, ben Benson. George Benson. George Benson. Okay, so he, he did all of this performing stuff, but his love was the production side. He loved you know, creating the music, the hit of Martin, you, um, please don't throw, we, it was in our bedroom. He brought a little keyboard. That, please don't throw, throw my love. That's Morris's song. 
weren't we gonna cover that, di ba? We were thinking about covering that song yeah, that was as it. intro voice. Well, we were in the room, and then he says, "I'm writing something for Martin," and he, I was on the bed. I think I was buntis. I'm not sure. And he was on the floor with a small keyboard. Yeah, and he wrote that song for Morris. Oh, yeah, for Martin. I mean, for for Ma- Morris did it for Martin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, wow. yeah. And that's how it started. And then you know, yung ikaw ang lahat sa akin. That was at our studio. And then the 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 guy just couldn't get the guitar solo. Who? I don't remember who it was. But anyway, <laughs> there was a guy that was hired to do the guitar solo, and he just he couldn't do it. So Morris says, "Just everybody go home." Late na ng gabi. The next day, he played, which is still today being copied. That's Morris. Wow. Yeah. Uh-uh. Ang producer noon yata was Chito Ilaga. Chito Ilaga, yeah, yeah. who is now with Polly East. Yeah. Yes. So I have a story about Chito Ilaga. I want to hear that. Chito's story? Yeah. Okay. Hi, boss Chito. Two things. <laughs> Hi, Chito. <laughs> so one of the stories is, Morris is uh, Brazilian, so okay. cough, coffee. Did yeah. Coffee. Ooh. Sabi niya, I can't stand this guy. So he, we bought a pot like this, and he mixed the coffee. I mean, it had to be according to his yeah. taste, di ba? Mapaklay. So sabi ni, sabi ni Chito, ang sarap nito. Naku, ang sarap. Five coffee cups later, oh, ang sarap nito. The next morning, we had a maybe a nine or ten o'clock schedule. No Chito. No Chito. No Chito. Say maybe slightly after lunch, Chito comes and his eyes are like this. <laughs> Hindi nakatulog. Sabi niya, grabe naman pala yung kape. <laughs> Na over coffee siya. <laughs> yung mata ni Chito talagang ganun. You know, it was the funniest thing. And then, um, um, uh, there was a time when Mor- Morris loved Chito, by the way. And then, uh, Morris got a car. It was a Lambda. Um, some, I know that. The Mitsubishi Lambda. It was not a Mitsubishi at the time. It was uh, from Italy. Oh. Uh, gamma, la, la, something Gamma. Anyway, so it was a sports thing. Lambda. Oh my no, God. Anyway, so, hey Chito, do you want... <laughs> Do you want to try the car? Oh, you drive Morris. Okay. Nawala sila. Oh. Eh, I Rodriguez. Wala right. pang traffic with right. I Rodriguez. Yes. Pagbalik, pagbalik nung kotse, bukas yung pintuan, sabi ni Chito, yeah. <laughs> 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 Hindi siya makatindig. Yung legs niya nag-crumble. Sabi niya, oh my God. Sabi niya, when Morris says, are you ready? Ready. Sabi ni Morris, wong. Sabi ni Chito, yung likod daw niya, jong. <laughs> And so that those were the experience. I mean, you know, you count on those. Yeah, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Those yeah. those those songs that you mentioned, they're, they're timeless. Yes. Whether Mapa George Benson, yes. whether Mapa Martin Rivera. Yeah. What was it like having witnessed all of this? Now, up to now, when you hear it, like like Tirma, this is so so intrinsic. Dial. Nan, gan, eto, kami. We were we were we were around this desk thinking about what to sing for the next intro voice concert, and we talked about. Please don't throw my love away. Yes, we you talked. Should. Why don't you? Pero di ba yeah. And now I have you here, and you witnessed the creation of this song. Yes. Yeah. Do you know that Morris uh, also did an English version of Dahil Sayo, and uh, he did it a la bossa, you know, and so uh, he got the. His name escapes me right now, which is horrible. The composer. Right. So, uh, not uh, Levy. Levy. No, 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 not Levy. Was yeah. it, it wasn't Levy Celerio? No. Uh, anyway, it'll come to me. It's not George Canseco? No. No, no, no. Jay Pak is searching it. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, Morris says, I need him to hear this song. I need to know if this meets with his approval. Because Morris wanted to make sure he was respectful right. to the composer. So we invited him sa bahay. Doon kami sa Corinthian. And so we we were there in the room that Morris had transformed into a studio. And then the guy was just like this, no? And Morris was looking at him. He goes, just a moment. Tinigil ni Morris yung music. music. Tapos sabi niya, if you don't mind. He got the chair and he put the guy right beside the speaker on the left ear. And after that, Morris played it again. Umiyak. I can't remember his name right now. What's the name of the composer? Anyway, dial, so, dial up yung telephone ni JT. Uh, so that was one of the nice stories. So he did, pam pam 
Bum, bum, bada, 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 Mike Velarde. Mike Velarde. So, oh, okay. da hil sa yo, there is summer breeze. Baka siguro, that's, baby, that's why you were at the city show because of the whole Bossa Nova baby. thing. No, but the exposure kasi to Bossa Nova was even before my ex-husband. Okay. There was a guy from the U.S. who uh, lived on Lafayette Street where we lived in Green Hills. He was further down. La Consai, ang last name. Oh. I can't remember his first name, but he brought Wave, the record Wave by Jobim. And the minute I heard it, I just went, <gasps> it's like it's like I belonged, you know, <laughs> some music na yon. He gave it to me and wow. he left it with me. And so I had this love for, for Brazilian okay. music. Wait, question. Yeah. Let's go back to Mike Velarde. Why okay. was he sat by Morris on... Ah, sorry, sorry. He had one of his ears he couldn't hear. So it was his left ear. So Morris moved the chair. I don't know how Morris figured it out, you know, but Morris put the chair right. We had this huge speaker, put him there and then played it again. And Velarde just cried. You know, he, he, he loved it so much. And, you know, I met the, the daughter or the niece several years ago here in NASA States. And I said, you know, you're, and she said, yes, yes, we, uh. all, we all know the story. Yeah. Yeah, ang galing, galing ng story. Music is so universally unifying, you know. So, si, si Jaime, we were together during the Intro Voices' first major concert at the Folk Arts Theater. Wow. Folk and Arts, wala nang Folk Arts ngayon, di ba? Wala na. Oo. So at least alam na natin kung gano'ng katayo, katatanda ngayon, <laughs> di ba? But, but that's where we had it. Yeah. It was my Jaime experience. It was awesome. The request talaga namin yung dahil feeling namin pag may Jaime Godinez ka, you've arrived. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, Medyo pero, pa, ganun pa rin, sort of. Di ba? Yeah. Parang, but he has, you know, his diverse uh, businesses now, you know. He even got into LIDAR. Uh, oh my God. Then he got into drone technology and all of that. Yeah. When he's here, he's a brother. He's not Jaime Godinez. In my house, Becca, can I have, how many times have you been here? <laughs> Oh, whatever, four or five times. Okay, do you know where the fridge is? Yes, go get it. <laughs> diba? Huh? Kapatid de, eh, you yeah. know? And so I know I cook the stuff that he likes, and then I leave it in the fridge. If he gets up early, are you not? Clunk, 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 sa kusina. Oh my God. Yeah, he's making noise. And it's his, um, it's his respite. It's his escape when he comes to the house. So and, th and this guy, my husband yeah. and Jaime, they're like little boys pinching each other. What are they gonna do? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But there's part of the home, ding dong, sabi ni Benito. So okay, so the Gary Valencianos, you, the the Martin Rivera's, simula, fresh out of their eggs, their yeah. shells. Now you 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 saw them yes. develop. Yes. When Martin was not yet Martin, I was in a TV studio. The director was Al Quinn, and Pilita and I were sitting down on a break. They had painted all the walls black and there were naked trees. Branches lang talaga ng punong kahoy na maliliit ganon. All white, all white, all white. So we were sitting there like that. Then there was a door, like a the warehouse doors, you know, that was on that side. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Gina comes in from there. My, she later on became my sister-in-law, right? See, si Gina Tabuena. Yeah. Uh, she's Jaime's wife. Yes. And then this young 17-year-old guy comes bounding in. Tita Pilita, you know, and all this. And it was Martin. He was barely 17, I think. Oh, my God. Yeah. He had just, just arrived. Arrived. And he was just starting. Gina was introducing him to people. And he already had that charisma. Charisma. And he calls himself Big Mouth. You know, that's his production is Big Mouth. But he yeah. did have a Big Mouth. I don't mean that physically. Right. I mean that he just had this ease. You know, with he had the gift of he has yeah. the gift of gab, Correct. talagang right. Who, right. by the way, is Gary's son, <laughs> Gab. si Gabi. Yeah. <laughs> I digress. So. You, you know that Pao is married to my uh, Jaime's oldest daughter. Pao, the oldest son, son of, of Gary, Gary yeah, no. is married to the oldest daughter of Jaime. Jaime. We were we were the all play, playmates. Sila nung bata sila. Yes. And the Valencianos and us, we all lived in an area in Green Hills. Magkabarkada kaming lahat. Montserrat, oh si my God. Valenciano, lahat kami. So when we go through like this, the yeah. telling, it's like, oh yeah, when we played pelota, oh yeah, when ganito, you know. Pelota! Pelota! Diba? 
Ngayon, ano na? Ano yung maliit na tennis? Ano yung... Pickleball. Pickleball. <laughs> I don't know if I'd enjoy pickleball. Yeah. I like to whack the yeah. ball, you know? Anyway, I don't know if I can still do it at this age. But anyway. So, so creme la creme. As in, that, were, that was you guys. Yeah. You were the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know that I was a strong member of the mafia, but Viker, after a while, they liked me. You know, they, they nurtured me and all of that. In the beginning, I had to do a lot of trying to prove myself, you know. I didn't, I I was performing in nightclubs. Biglan lang lahat nightclubs. I, one of the worst experiences was a nightclub da, in Pasay somewhere, some CD joint. Oh. And I go, why am I, why am I here? Yung sabi ko sa, sa agent ng, ano, ng Vicor, ang kinagawa ko dito. It was one of those things where, uh, Miss Becca, uh, yung mayor ng whatever, whatever, yeah. nandito, pwede ka bang pumunta sa mesa oh, nila? Lord. And I'm like, you know, I was just going, don't you ever, yeah. you know, put me in a place like this again, you know? And it, there, there's many lessons that you learn, but in the lessons that you learn, you gain this confidence being on stage. It's like, been there, done that. Right. You know, when I was doing the nightclub thing, uh, the lady, the manager, when I was rehearsing, she she liked me for some reason. She liked me, and it was one of those nightclubs. I'm sorry, ha, sa audience, pero yun ang katotohanan noon. You would walk to the side, men would walk, and there was a one way mirror, mm. and you could point to the women, to the women, kung sino ang gusto mo dun, whatever. Yeah. So she she walked me beyond that, and she went like this, and she goes that table right there, which was if I was on stage, it was right on stage side. left, uh-huh. no? She goes, it's like ten or twelve people. Um, medyo sobra yung mga tao doon. Tinatakot nila yung mga artista. And they said, the last performer, they got a pitcher of water and threw it oh. against the stage. Yung mga ganon, right? Yeah, nangaharas. She, oh, oh. So sabi niya, Becca, just keep an eye on those guys because they'll try to do it to you. So I said, okay. So I started my show. Da, na, 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 na. You know, and um, when I was done, one of the guys goes, Wah! you know, to try to scare me. And I said, I heard about you guys. I said, you guys are famous in this nightclub. And I kept talking to him without... Talaga, sabi niya, talaga one-on-one. Like, oh, oh you, you put him on blast. I, I, I did. And you know what? They were my best audience that night. <laughs> Bought me a bottle of champagne. <laughs> you know, all of that. And so, these things you learn from doing. It's like when I do a show, you have this... Uh, something where you can pick out who in the audience is going to be the person that you'll talk about or who you're going to attack in a sense, in in an artistic way, you know, that you kind of get the feel. When I was doing show, when I went to Manila to do, I did ministry, uh, music Mm. ministry and all that. I I went and they would say, oh, come to the front. I go, no, 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 it's okay, I'll stay in the back. No, no, but you're the artist. No, 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 I'll stay in the back. Why? Because I'm watching the people. I'm seeing them interact with whoever is on stage so that by the time I'm on stage, I know I know where to go. I know who to pay attention to. I, you know, uh, and, and I don't know that, that I would have learned that if I was coddled. Kung talagang, yeah. you know, been a baby ako, ganun, ganun, you know? And so these were the lessons that I, I still value them today. this carte, no? Mm. You had that. It was, it you can either cry about the sad experiences or you can say, okay, in my pocket experience, you know, and use it to your advantage. Right. Let's Lan- talk, let's talk about your, ano naman, your faith. Naman. When, when did you, when did you come to the crossroad? It was a slow go. Um, the marriage with Morris was not doing well. I mean, that's, this is general knowledge because we're best friends yes. now. So it was, it was, it was not doing well. And Chris Bermont, Mm. Uh, she said, Becca, can I go to your house? She and Sally at the time, the sister Sally, who's now married to Pastor, Pastor. Come on. Don't look at me like I should <laughs> know. <huh? laughs> okay, anyway, I'll remember. I know you feeling when people look at you, but wait, now it's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Yeah, so, so they <clears throat> came dark. Ang dilim dilim. I was already... Right. Yung, you know, things were wrong. I was, I was, eh. so they came and they said, Becca, may, may regalo kami sa'yo. Naka, naka, ano, naka, nasa loob ng supot. Ganun kalaki yung Biblia, ganun. Oh, Lord. And Fear. they said, here, they gave me yeah. a Bible, no? Um, prior to that Bible, 
Um, I had gone, I can't remember who brought us. I think it was Carla Martinez. Mm-hmm. We went to a secluded, uh, shrouded nuns, no? And um, no, no, after that, pala, after that, we went. And uh, it was not all at once. It was little things that were happening. And I'll tell you when the culmination was. But we went to this shrouded nun, whatever, behind screens and everything. And I was sharing what I had read the night before. And I was weeping. Sorry, sorry. I was weeping because it meant so much. It was hitting me. It was like the Bible was only then starting to come alive. It was talking, speaking to you. Right. Yeah. So we go to this place and I mentioned this and then I said, and in my Bible, and they brought this, one of the nuns says, ang laki naman yung Bible, <laughs> ang laki naman yung Bible, you know, like, how do you hide it? You know, because I, I used to hide the Bible. Yeah. Sa kwarto ng anak ko, she was baby, sa banyo, nandun, naka, nakasuksuk dun sa tubo. So, the, and then I would say, my mom, <laughs> My mom cracked up. But anyway, so I would say, I have to go to the bathroom. I go and Just to read your Bible. Just to read my Bible. So I would go and then I'd read and, and then I'd stop, no? Because I says, my gosh, you've been going to the bathroom a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so when we went to these nuns, she goes, ang laki na yung Bible. So then, tapos na, no? And then all of a sudden, she came with this small mm. brown uh, cover, small Bible. And it was not a Catholic Bible. It was... Um, Christian. I mean, from a nun. From a nun, and she goes, "We don't, we don't advertise what we read." Yung parang hindi nila sanabi. You have to read this. Yeah. She gave me this little book, and then I said, "So what I would do is I would open it to the verse, dry your tears." You know, I can't remember what it was anymore, but it was in Psalms, and I opened it, and it opened to the same. I had what? never, I never big touched one it. open dun pupunta. small one open dun din pupunta. same verse. Everybody was crying. All of us were crying. And then they asked me to sing and I sang the Lord's Prayer. I just sang it. And everybody was, it was an amazing moment. And I knew then that something was happening. You know. uh, Were you fighting it? No. No. Okay. When I was much younger, I used to like walk, now. I used to walk to be one of the Christian, youth Christian something. Yeah. I can't remember. But I would walk to say, to go to church and pray for people and walk out, not realizing I could have been kidnapped. I could have, you know, because yeah. uh, protection, money, uh, yeah. walang, you know, it was like, anyway. So I already knew. And then at night I'd go, Father, please bless, loud, please bless my mother, my father, and, blah, 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 and thank you for today. I was just doing that every night without really thinking about it. I just knew I had to pray at night. Um, years later, here in NASA States, Jaime uh, was the sound engineer for a concert of Gary's at the Universal Studios. And it was bad, bad, bad time for me. I was, I think I was going through the divorce, na, siguro, or, or it was getting to the divorce. I sat down beside Jaime, tapos nagpe-perform. From my vantage point, si Gary nandun, na, nandun siya. Nakaputi. And then he just started walking and he walked up some steps and there was a baby grand piano. And then he played, Could You Be Messiah? The Messiah song. Yeah. And I just went, Gug. You know, it was that it was that moment that I said, Lord, I'm yours. Yeah, it, it was like there was no denying that something had happened and that it was not something I could fight. It was not something I created. It was not something Gary created. There was no way he would have known, you know? And it wasn't until much later that uh, I found out that the melody was Gary's, but the lyrics were Freddie, direct Freddie. Oh, Santos. Santos, he wrote the lyrics, you know? And Freddie and I were in the theater together and Freddie was not Christian, you know. And when we met, because I produced a show uh, in Manila, a play that I had done here, I produced it in Manila. I I asked Freddie to help me with production. He introduced me to per- people, you know, who to approach, music museum pa, you know, and all of that. And that's when we shared. Freddie was the one who gave me the bi- my Bible. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> Small <laughs> world. Holy. Yeah. yeah. Every time I got to Manila, we would meet there in front of Green Hills. The, it was a, they had pastries and stuff. I can't remember anymore. Pero dun sa may parang rotonda ng ganun. And we would meet there all the time. It's sad that he's gone. I know. Um, I think he knew. I think he knew. 
uh, he said, you know, I, I'm doing these things because I still have to take care of my parents, you know, wow. and all of that. <laughs> he says, you know, estoy cansada. He, he, cansado, you know, he would say, I'm, I'm tired. And I think he knew. Same with Bernardo, you know. When he was here, right? Bernardo was here. and uh, Did you guys hang out when he was here? Yes, uh, in a sense. Yeah. Um, but something began to happen with Bernardo. And... And Bernardo, guys, is Bernardo Bernardo. The yeah, Bernardo Bernardo, sorry. Um, we started, my first ever professional uh, musical was West Side Story in mm. rock, sa Manila, yon, just before martial law. And uh, he played uh, um, the leader of the, the... The East. Sharks. No, the Jets. The Jets no, by sh the... Sh sharks. The Jets. Sharks, ano ba yung East, ano ba yung West? Sharks were the La Puerto Ricans. The Puerto Ricans. And the Jets were the Puti, no? Yeah. And that's where I met Bernie. And then uh, after that experience, several months later, um, he was auditioning for Cabaret. And my parents had already said, nope, you're not going to do anymore. Yung West Side Story. Alam mo yung mga Armalite na yeah. nandun sa bubong, you know, watching our rehearsals. You know, it was pretty scary at the time. <clears throat> Martial law had just been declared. And, you know, we were a whole group of people. So we had to have permits and you had to prove that you really were doing a musical. Right. There were people on rooftops. Was it bad? Was Marshall really, really bad? Um, or after a while, do you get desensitized? I think, I think people got desensitized. Uh, in the beginning, you know, it was like scary, scary, mm -hmm. scary. You know, and, and uh, we had come back from Australia, bumalik kami, and the purpose was to get to Manila and stay a little bit, then go back. Right. Eh, wala nang go back after 1972. Naka oh, Marshall oh. na siya, di ba? Anyway, so then after that, Bernardo was, was tapped to direct cabaret and i was i was going with uh, edgar chalian and his wife to drop off something i can't remember what it was and i was kind of in the in the in the back and he cracked the joke and i laughed because it was funny and he goes oh, do i hear a familiar voice you know, oh and then i and he goes beck are you here and he pulled me from the from the shadows put me in front of the uh, piano and he had me sing maybe this time i'll be lucky one of the songs, no, uh, of of, uh, of cabaret. cabaret, and he cast me as the lead. He had to beg my parents to allow me, because I was I was what sixteen. I, yeah, I don't know. I whatever, and I had to play a woman of the world. You know, I didn't know what in heaven's name woman of the world meant at that time, and uh, so he was he and I did that, and then he and I were together in the King and I, you wow. know, and so then when he came here. Um, he was trying to be a professor, I believe. One of the things he wanted to do was to be a professor at a university in San Francisco. Anyway, so I gave him his first voiceover um, job. That's how I got my SAG after card. I was doing voiceovers. Another blessing um, that happened. Kaling. Yeah, it just it just all kind of fell into place. But anyway, so I, I said, Bernardo, you know, they need someone. I said, but please, Bernie, I said, don't, don't make it public, no? Kasi yeah. ang hirap to get this kind of job. Yes. And so can you just keep it ganon? He says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he did it and the first thing he did was he posted it on Facebook. <laughs> so I was, I was, you know, so I called him, I said, Bernie, and he snapped at me, which was not Bernie at all, you know? Um, and then he snapped at me again at another thing that I had helped to put together, which was at the... Um, what was the name of the Danny Moran thing? Benitz, the grill, something. Uh, in uh, It was something for ABS-CBN and it was for, you know, fundraiser. And then he he said something in front of people and I got I, I got embarrassed. And so I arm's length ako sa kanya for, for maybe two, three, four years. I'm not sure how long. Um, and then uh, I got a call from Joseph Gelito. Yeah. You know Joseph? Yeah. Beautiful voice, Joseph. Love Joseph. Anyway, so he said, Becca, you know, uh, Bernardo's been very sick. And I went, oh? After he did, he directed um, a, a play um, for with Ted Benito, no? He directed a play, very good play. Um, so I said, uh, uh, they're asking me to go to support the show. And I was kind of hesitant, you know, I didn't want to because of, I, of what happened. Yeah, no, and because he never really apologized, mm -hmm. wala, no? As a matter of fact, galit pa siya na ganun yung reaction ko. But I said, this is not the Bernie that I know. 
hindi to si Bernie, you know. So we all went. My husband and we got a bunch of people to go to support. No? Yeah. We had a long table, ganon. And uh, he was kind of fluttering back and forth. And Joseph said to me, Becca, nasira yung sound system. Nasira yung video na ginawa niya. Tapos yung, yung uh, what you call it? The, the monitor, no? For, wala, the, for the lyrics. Wala lahat wala talaga. Teleprompter, wala. Teleprompter, lahat. And you could, it's like, oh my goodness, you know? So he goes, well, ladies and gentlemen, I have, you know, this is my first time back. He was really trying, no? And then he got one guy to come up. I can't remember the name of the guy, but so the guy went, he, like a short long, ganon. And then he, I could see when he looked at me and I saw the panic. When I saw that panic, he says, Becca, and I saw the, I, I had to get up there. So I was up there and we did. Impromptu ito. Impromptu. We did like two, <clears throat> two or three songs together, just Bart, you know, like bantering and ganun ganun, kumanta kami, etc. And this is when the peace happened between us. And when he finally decided to go to Manila, one of the first people that I saw was Bernie. We met at a restaurant in uh, in Makati and we hugged. People thought we were lovers. I mean, even throughout the meal, we were like this eating, you know, nakaganun kaming dalawa because we went through so much together. And we realized it was just part of the experience, you know. And um, much, much later, of course, uh, he was here when he did the film. He did a film in Japan. Mm. And it was beautifully done, you know. I said, my gosh, Bernie. Because it was so understated, his performance. It was amazing. And I hugged him. I still have pictures of that time. Talagang, you know, the love. And I said, something's wrong with this guy. He's parang bloated siya. You never opened it up with him? Uh, only after he got back to Manila, he said, and he didn't just say it to me, he announced it to several people that uh, he's been sick and uh, I think it was the pancreas. Um, and he announced it and all of that. And I said, oh, Bernie, and we were still exchanging. I still have those memories with Direk Freddy, with Bernie. No? And he said, I said, Bernie, uh, cling to, I, mean, I said, uh, hold on to God, Sabi yeah. ko, you know, give it, you know, because he accepted prayer na by that time. And then he says, I'm clinging, Sabi niya, I'm clinging to him. I have a new relationship with God. And Amen. I, oh, oh, nag peace ako dun. Uh, and then the next thing was the sister. She sent me a picture of just her hand holding his. And he knew he was going to go, but, um, he didn't want to be left alone. That's the only thing. He didn't have guests. He didn't have visitors and all that. But he wanted to make sure that while he was in the room, may humahawak sa kanya. Yun lang. And then, not very soon after that, he passed. Yeah. So there's there's the sad and there's the you know there's the good and there's the funky experiences. I was the first. I was one of two. The first uh, singers union right. sa Philippines, which was headed by Rico mm. Puno. And then Haji and I were uh, vice presidents, interior, exterior, and on. And we were able to expose some of the tricks that uh, radio stations were doing uh, to say that they played OPM, pero hindi naman during the day, <laughs> ganon. And we were uh, actually forming a uh, committee for the first Cecil Awards. That was in, wow. uh, in yeah, and. Uh, the Cecil Awards honored this guy, Cecil, who was the first recording, blah, blah, blah. And um, I was already at the meeting, nandito si I, me, whatever. No? Oh my God. The sincerity was yeah. there about trying to, and all the big wigs of radio and ganon, hindi ko na may mention. Pumasok si Rico at si Haji, talagang walang tulog. No? So what they did is they asked friends to record per station per radio station. How many times may, may so, OPM music na pinatutugtog? So they came <clears throat> and uh, so what happened? Oh, so we just researched ganito, ganyan, no? So I backed out na, sila na ang star nung talking and they said, oh no, but we play you. Yes, sir, you play us at 2 a.m. until 4 a.m. Yung ganon nangyari. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm me who was heading the thing at the time was like flabbergasted, you know? And I think that we were able to, at that time, I don't know, you know, what what anything is now, but at that time we were able to punch the system a little bit, and so there was more, there were more uh, Pinoy songs that yeah. were playing during the day. Because, because ngayon yata, uh, time ko, I'm not sure I I stand corrected, but 
every hour five at oh, least. Oh. Pero kami nung inumpisahan namin talaga talagang wala. You Yun could lang, eh. lahat kano lahat foreign uh, you know the the prime 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 times uh, foreign music ang tinutugtog. Let's go back. Um, why did you leave the why? Philippines? Because Okay, so the, I left in what then did I leave? Eighty. My daughter was born eighty three, so we left in eighty five. Uh, we were told by one key person and then another one sa banco. Uh, tell your husband not to bring any more money in here. And I was going, what are you talking about? Just tell him to leave. Oh my God, it's a people power yes. time. We were told to leave. Um, you know, Morris and I were, we don't, we never got into politics. But right. as artists, um, we were kind of, sometimes you couldn't say no. Oh, you're, you're dragged into it. Eh? Correct. So, because si Morris was living in the country, yung ganun ganun. Um, so, when we had um, that studio, we had Tasha, Tasha. and uh, we had to sell it before before leaving and the minute that we were able to do that we left several months later people power nangyari and i wow. yeah it, we we were able to 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 escape that no and uh i i am never political i will not i will not campaign for anyone i will not say i am this or i am that mm. i will not because dad taught me a very uh, important lesson sabi niya beka you don't understand politics. You don't know politics. You are a singer. And whoever rises and falls, you still want to be a singer. Yeah, yeah. No? So he said, as much as possible, don't. Don't do it. And that was a smaller arena, of course, no? And then fast forward to here, uh, there have been a few Filipino-American, you know, uh, folks who go, can you come, you know, and all this. I go, with much respect. I'm sure you know you do well, blah, 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 whatever. Um, but I don't do politics. I will not say if I'm pro against. I w- I won't, because politics is so personal. Yes. You know, and then the way that it has evolved, ngayon nagagalit yung tao. Polarized, no? Yes. Yes, and I I don't want to be a part of that. There's enough in the world to concern yourself with, you know. Um, to, to get into a situation, I had to defend myself one time. There was a, a uh, dun sa may Palos Verdes, may, 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 may barbecue lunch coming <laughs> on. Sabi ko, I said, I will not. I will not do it. I said, and then there's this frenzy, and he goes, da, 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 da. I call it the piranha effect, no? Da, 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 da. Ayun, na elected na. Nasaan na tayo? All of us who gave our support, all of us who said, you know, we'd sing for you, we'd play for you, we'd do this, we'd do that. After they win, where are you? I'll add to that. I stopped talking about politics because here we are campaigning for these politicians. To your point, pag tayo binatikos, di man la tayo pagtatanggol eh. It's a hard lesson to learn. It, it's a hard lesson it's to a learn. Hard, and, and you know, in this country at least, you have the opportunity to create the barriers yeah. you know on how you want to live your life ngayon ang ang sinabi sa akin nung isa yung mga artista sa Philippines they say you want me to campaign for you pay mm. malaki 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 so yeah. you know if you want to be part of that you know many leave <laughs> they just leave i just won't do it there's been enough negativity and experience to say i don't want to be a part of it i don't need it in my life you know, I come here, I do my concerts, I get home, take out the lashes, you know, and put my sweatshirts, my chinelas, and, done. and I'm done. And no one can get into my business. I have a business, by the way. Oh, what, what, is, what, what is that? <laughs> I um I have chorizo de Bilbao. No. I have Cebu style chorizo. No. And then in oh my in March, I'm gonna have linguiza filipina. How can they order this? It's in 29 Seafood City Supermarkets. It's your brand? My brand, Godinez 316. Okay, ayan na, alam niya, 316, John 316. Eh, no? Yeah, and my birthday, 316. March 16? Yeah, and God is in my name. Oh, oh, oh my God, you have it. <laughs> wow. 
So my umbrella company is God in Us Productions. Because Godinez, God in Us, it's a play. And then my food products is Godinez 316. And I said, Lord, this is for you. So I started with Bilbao. But so, ta- I, so talaga pinapabilis mo yung pagla- pagputa nila sa heaven eh, no? <laughs> <laughs> um, the chorizo de Bilbao is not an original, yeah. you know, because I just loved the idea of chorizo de Bilbao. So Me I, also, eh. I have that version. Okay. Ngayon, I uh, had an unfortunate, my heart stopped and I died for a few um, when, seconds. When was this? In 2020. In April of 2020. Um, anyway, so I ended up in the hospital and I ended up in ICU and my my body gave up, my heart gave up. So they had to rush me down to the cath lab. They put a... Um, Stent? No, no, they put a temporary pacemaker. Oh. The following Thursday, I was in the ICU and they were checking on everything. And then by Friday, what day was that, Benito? Good, Good Friday. Friday. Good Friday. Good Friday. They put in uh, my pacemaker, which I have now. And I How's the microwave? No. Not, is, is it a myth? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, later I said, this is it. I will say yes to the things I want to do and no to the things I don't want to do. I've been given a second chance. Amen. And I am not going to, you know, I mean, there's some things when you go, I don't want to do it, but they're friends, you know, so you go, okay. Like um, this one? No, this one, um, the minute Ted told me about it, I viewed it. And I said, I didn't know. I mean, you know, it was it was so entertaining. It really was. <laughs> and you. you have a way of circling the subject and going back to it. And so my heart says, you're listening. Yeah. I you're am. listening. Yeah. So that's the thing. There's a lot of interviewers, you know, that ask you. And then 20 minutes later, they forgot what they asked you. You know who's good at that? Siboy Abunda. Oh, yeah. He's very good at remembering, mm. you know, what he asked you on the first part. Wala siyang kodigo, yung ganon. Ang galing niya. Anyway, why do that, I digress? That's my, that's my inspiration. No, we were talking about the pacemaker. We were talking about, you know, your, your business and you being here and you doing this for friends and all that. So, yeah. I guess, yung podcast natin is, you're doing it wholeheartedly. Thank you we, that, that you're doing it. Are we done? No, we're oh, not. Sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, like thank you lang ako. Okay. okay. So now you have you have this business. Yes. Your heart stopped. Did it, and you said this is your second life. Yeah, second right? chance. Second no? chance. And so I I've always liked business. Nobody really knew that I worked for corporate America for ten years. You, you know? did. I did. And you learn a lot of skills. You know. And so um, I handled million dollar accounts proposals. You know. And I would scrub them. I mean that's how. I got, you know, demographics, statistics, yung lahat lahat, no? Uh, and I loved that. I loved the business side of things. Even when I do concerts, hindi pwede na ako lang yung nasa harapan. You know, I have to know how did it tick, what the lights, yes. what it, na involve ako talaga. So, so <coughs> I said, I've always, always thought about making the Cebu, chorizo de Cebu. Especially Cebu, kasi Cebuano yung asawa ko. But it had like a different thing about it. It was not longanisa. It wasn't, you know. So I decided to, I had, gosh, so many recipes. So I tried Formula 1, Formula 2, Formula 3. I went up to Formula 7 and then 7A, 7B, 7C. I ended up on D, no? And what it is is you taste test it. So I had my family taste, my friends taste right. it and all that. I have a manufacturer um, that I made friends with in the 80s that helped me when I was down and out. And they, they're, they're still friends. Wow. And then in 20... 2009 or 2010, I also was importing products. And I realized it's not the part of the business that I like. Um, I was, Marami bang red tape? If you are not familiar with the process, it is red tape. Okay. Pero love ko eh. So, mm. you know, to me, it was always a journey of discovery. You know, ah. paano ko gagawin, sinong kakausapin ko, yes. paano pumapasok yes. from outside, you know, and yes. all of that. So, um, uh, I, at that time, in 2011, 2012, I ended up with a distributor, pero tail end na, I was, may nagsaksak ng kuchilyo sa likod ko. And um, I just said, okay, I'm done. I, I just don't want to do this. That was 2012. But I had met this distributor, and I said, I should have had him, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it was just one of those misfortunate, you know, things, misfortunate? Miss, um, unfortunate. Unfortunate. <laughs> Sorry, unfortunate. Parang mali yun. So anyway, so um, I quit, right? In 2016, 
if I had walked five seconds faster or five seconds slower, I would not have met this person in the frozen department of Seafood City in Carson. Because I was going to say, ang hirap pumasok ng Seafood City. Well, I had already gotten in. Okay. I had already gotten in. Pero uh, I quit, di ba? Yeah. So 2012. And then wala na. Ayoko na talaga. Kumakanta na lang ako kung ano-anong ginagawa ko. So um, I was looking for a particular food product and I was walking and this person goes, Becca, how are you now? <laughs> and in my brain, I was going, Heavenly Father, please remind me who this woman is. I cannot remember who she is. Please, Lord. Because she knew me, right? And she goes, Gemma. I went, Gemma naman. How do you expect me to remember you? You lost so much weight and your hair is long. <laughs> Which was true, by the way, Gemma, if you're listening. Uh, and right behind her came the vice president of purchasing, whom I had met briefly. No? And so we ended up chatting. And she said, oh, no, wala ka nang. I said, you really don't know what happened to me. She goes, no. So I explained to her what happened, no? that I, I was betrayed in the worst way and all of that and i said so i said i don't want to be in the business and she goes oh so you have no more product i said no i don't and then i went well my brother-in-law has a product he wants to bring to the u.s sabinya what product i said lato and i saw the shoulder do this you know and i said Ooh, Ooh. body language right so she said oh see really because they don't like middlemen as as little as possible yes. so I, she said who who's your supplier i said my brother-in-law you know so i was leaving for manila she was they were opening up chicago she goes oh, sige, let's chat do you have any marketing material and after that i went lord what are you doing you know it's like do you want me to get back to this business oh my Yung God. <clears throat> so uh i got home and i said what am i going to do now You know, I, I, I lost all my contacts, ganun, ganun. Yeah. Nakatindig ako dun sa in between the living and the and the den area, kitchen area. And then I just stopped. And then I heard, sit down. So naupo ako. <laughs> <laughs> naupo ako, ganun. Sabi ko, okay, now what? And then the word distributor. And I went, oh my gosh. And I remembered that I had yeah, bowed yeah, it in yeah. as a distributor. I oh. have several, but his particularly, I said distributor doesn't usually answer the phone. I dial the phone, Becca, kumusta ka na? You know, and that's what started it. I gave him, and I said, o oh, sige, sir, dito ha, sa'yo na, sa inyo na yan. No, 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 wait, wait. And he's the one who said, Becca, wag mong bitiwan to. Bihira wait, 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 you were just gonna hand it off? Yes, and I get a percent. Right. As an agent. Right. You know, I didn't want to have anything to do with the business anymore. Oh my and God. And he, he says to me, wag mo tong bitiwan, Becca. Bihira ang may talent na kagaya mo. Marunong ka maghanap ng product, yeah. mag-test ng market, you know, etc., etc. So that's how we kind of got back, I kind of got back into it with the Lato, which is his brother's business. And then after that, I thought about the Chorizo de Bilbao. And we met with the purchasing department at the store. And they liked the Chorizo, but they said, we want to adjust the flavor to be more Pinoy, you mm-hmm. know. So my... Chorizo de Bilbao is based on the original Chorizo de Bilbao, but it was changed a little bit by the R&D department. So fast forward to 2020, I said, I want my own. I want to create my own. And I did. I learned how to stuff sausages. I mean, I just taught myself. So itong recipe na to, iyo na to. Oh, wow. Mine. I have a non-disclosure agreement. I know where I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> Seafood City. Yeah. Um, Godinez 316 Cebu style chorizo. Please ask me how to cook it, okay? Because okay, okay, don't okay. cook it well, nako. But it's it's the only one that truly caramelizes. You know, masarap eh, no? Pag pag nandun, oh. And when when we're done, like we sa sa bahay namin, kin, we've already put the sausages in the plate or whatever. My daughter's there with her spoon, going scraping it, scraping, it, scraping yeah. the the caramelization, and she goes, "Mommy, let's call this meat candy." Yeah. So then, uh, so tapos na yon. As of few months ago, my product was one of top 10 return orders um, at Seafood City and uh, top 10 weekly na ngayon sa distributor. And um, yeah, so that was uh, uh, maybe six months ago, we ran out of 30,000 labels. Yeah. And so we're on our second batch of 30,000 labels for the Cebu style. It's a hit. Cebu style chorizo, which God gave me. He, he gave it to me. You know, I mean, I was just there. I have, I have uh, my, my friends, 
uh, bi- uh, sewed me up uh, like a duster para hindi mag-scrape yeah. dito kasi yeah. may, may sugat, no? So, I, I, I am cooking that and you can see my scar. You know, I'm really, really a blessing. And then, finally, I said, I think I'm ready for another product. So, I tried I tried it last year and I said, I don't like the way this is going. Lord, please. You know, I always, Lord, please. And so, I changed the name of what I wanted to do. So, I was going to I didn't like the name. But anyway, so then I said, I'm going to make a Filipino linguisa. And I kid you not, I mean, everyone that has eaten it has has gone crazy over That's it. a seafood city rin to? Not yet. Not okay. yet. Oh, so wala pa? Wala pa. Wala March pa, pa March. Oh my God. March, we're hoping March. No? Mar- but Mar- March 16. And there's no such thing. There's no, <laughs> yeah, no? Walang uh, no such thing yeah. as a linguisa in the Philippines. None. Because that's a Portuguese Spanish. Right. So I altered the recipe so that I can claim that it has some Filipino in it. Imagine, no? If you if you if you're able lang talaga to discern and just let God lead you where He intends you to to go. Yeah. Doors really break down, eh? Right. They, they, they lang open. They actually, kini kick niya yung door talaga. You para. wanna hear a kick? Yeah. Okay. My latest kick. So, uh, in 2022, um, Princess Punsa, 2023, ba yon Benito? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Princess Punsalan, out of the we're, we're, we're neighbors, right? And we're, we're good friends. Aww. She says, Becca, Becca, you have to audition for this role. Blah, 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 blah. And she was going really a mile a minute. I'm going, what are you talking about? She said, I just auditioned for a role in San Diego for a film. And uh, she said, they're looking for a character they haven't been able to find. I think this is perfect for you. Blah, 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 blah. Yun lang, Becca. Ano ha? Walang English. Tagalog lahat. Sabi ko, naluloka ka ba? I said, you know, I, oh, I, I speak converse, conversational yeah. uh, Tagalog. And she goes, Becca naman, may script. <laughs> So, I love princess. Oh, she's wonderful. Anyway, so then I said, she says, you just have to, uh, uh, how do you call it, present a uh, a self tape. Yes. I, said, I don't know how to do a self. I have never done film. Come on, audition, di ba? Yes. Vid- yeah. Video audition. Yeah. Yeah. I've never done film. I always wanted to do film. I go, Lord, no man, how am I gonna do film? This is my prayer for a long time. And then she said, I'll be in your house tomorrow. <laughs> When I said I didn't know how to do self tape, read the script. Blah, blah. So yung yung hospital bed, linagyan ko ng bed sheet, yung sofa. Tapos nakaputi ako hanggang dito, you know, And she was the one who filmed everything. I got a call. She so she she sent it by email. The next day she got a reply, and the director said I'm definitely interested. And she said, can you uh, do a Zoom call with us production night? So I thought director, producer, and I don't know who else. Maybe four yeah. or five people. Saturday, nandun yung script, Zoom call. 14 people. Oh my God, dami dami. Tao, nan, ninervis ako bigla. And then, so I met everybody and then she says, okay, we'd like for you to read again. So I, I, um, I read it, no? And then, si Marivi Soliven Blanco, she goes, famas, famas, she goes like this. And I was going, oh, that was nice. That was nice of her because it gave me confidence, confidence. no? So it's just, okay, I want you to read it again, but don't breathe so hard. In other words, because yeah. it's walang hangin eh, you know? It's a COVID patient. And, and, and you just, this was before your COVID or after? I, no, I had not gotten Kaya nga. This was when I was having difficulty breathing because of my heart. But not COVID yet. No, oh. not COVID. So I knew kind of what the feeling yeah. was, right? Because that's what I was doing all the way to the emergency. So I couldn't breathe. And so um, I did it and I got, you know, a round of applause. And then Christina Ree, who was the other producer, said, I have to leave. I have to leave. I'm so sorry. I have something in 30 minutes. Then she stopped. She goes, Becca, um, would you be available for some, you know, other takes in July? I went, excuse me. <laughs> Ignorant. <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> this is my first film. Are you saying I got cast? Tawa nan silang lahat. Yes, of course. The role is yours. And that's how I how I got into film. I've been praying about being in film. I was given scripts before. Na parang talagang it didn't fit yung ganon. And then this happened like like that. And we are now on our seventh film festival. The film qualified for seven. Yeah. Imagine this, Dom. Like, 
<clears throat> we're talking about people. We surround ourselves with people with good intentions. Yes. And good things do happen. Yeah. Diba? And sana, ano, yung pulot nila, because your, your story, ha, ang galing, in my head, I'm like, how many times are you able to reinvent yourself? But the reality is, just once, because you give your life to God, and then He'll mold you. Exactly. Kung saan, kung saan siya mag-glorify. Be used of the Lord. Oh, oy. You know, I, I will be open to whatever, you know. Uh, right. As long as I feel that there is, there's honesty and integrity and, you know, all of that. And really and sincerely, Benito and I, can I say it, Benito? Um, I used to be the one that was fervent and, you know, on, but he would be um, like a Sunday Christian. You right. Know, he'd go yeah. there. Uh, and I used to say, Lord, the man, why is his territory so far? Ventura, yung territory niya, you know. Um, and I would say, you know, his, his safety, his this, his that. Unbeknownst to me, God had a plan. And this guy who is a talk radio fan, talagang radio siya, for some reason, he was enticed to listen to Christian radio. And then he began to, and now our, he, this guy is so born again. He's so fervent, you know, and that's my answered prayer from God. Yes. I really wanted that. You're going faithful ka lang. and then si God na bahala, di ba? Yeah. He took care of it. And now <clears throat> there's not a day that we leave, eat, separate, and not hold hands and pray. It's every day, you know. And it's not to boast. It's to say thank you, yes. Father. Because that is such peace, you know, that it gives you. And we've had, we've had major challenges, you know. And we just bow. And we say, Lord, you said ask. We're asking. You know? How did you guys meet? Oh, my goodness. Um, how did we meet the needs? Oh, oh, I know. I was working uh, for, a, for a company in Santa Ana. And they were friends, no? Mm. Uh, at that time, I, was, I had worked for a, a Contessa, you know, and she had the French market and all of that. And then that kind of fell apart. Then I worked for a French guy. That didn't work out. And then Vinci Saragossa, you know, was looking for someone to work. Uh, and so he said, I will train you. I will teach you. And he did, no? Anyway, so uh, Vinci had friends, uh, important friends. And one day I said, Karginan, and, and the guy says, Becca, friend, no? He says, listen, I was supposed to meet with a friend in Orange County, but uh, things have changed and I have to go to the peninsula in Beverly Hills. Can I, kasi noon beeper pa eh, wala yeah. pang cell phone. So sabi niya, uh, can I, you know, have beep him and for him to call you and then you tell him to right. meet me. So um, he calls and I said, Mr. Sergo's office. And then he goes, did you beep me? Then, <laughs> al- walang ano. Walang <laughs> At taray, wala good afternoon, oh, good morning, wala, good wala, evening. Wala, wala. Did you beep me? I said, is this Mr. Miranda? And he said, yes. And I said, I have a message for you from that guy. And then uh, the message is that he can't meet you in Orange County. Would you please meet him? And he says, I, you know, I, you, bad word, yeah. no? And I went, oh! I said, you're not supposed to say things like that to people you haven't even met. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he threw out another one. And I said, oh! And he goes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, so that's how we met, right? <laughs> so that night, I was talking to my sister, and she goes, ooh I went, what? She goes, you haven't talked about a guy since, you know, yes. the divorce ako. Ooh-wee, I said, Pamela, I haven't even seen the guy. You got on, yeah, but you're talking about, ooh oh, She was going like that, yeah. no? and I was going, okay, whatever. And um, that was the time of a uh, place called Calesa. Uh, okay. Okay. Where's the place, Benito? Tasted. The intestine. So, uh, okay. so there was a Friday group and there was a Saturday group. And what it is, is it's a small, it's a restaurant by the people who owned Mario's in Manila. And there's a restaurant part. And then there's a tinier area that had a little dance floor and salvaca, you know, playing the guitar. And people would just go nuts dancing. Yung simple lang yeah. talaga. Play, uh, uh, simple pleasures. So a friend of mine, Arnie, she says, Beka, Beka, you come Friday. This was now the Friday after I talked to him. I talked right. to him on a Monday. Sige na, I said, no, I'm not going. It's unlayo layo. And she goes, Sige na, Beka. I said, Arnie, you guys are already snoring in bed. I'm still going home. Sabi kong ganun ka You know, it was that far. And she goes, no, no, no. You know, you bring, bring, ano, bring Tasha. 
my daughter was tiny at, at the time. She goes, you sleep na lang in the house. Ganun, right. ganun, ganun. I'll have my mom and my kids watch her and let's go. But I have to leave ahead of you. I said, you better have a chair for me. I said, because I, I was so scared to... Yeah, this was your first time out. Correct. So we get over there. I mean, I get over there and there's already a long <clears throat> table and I see an empty seat. I said, that's probably mine. no. But when I arrived, I looked left. And I saw this guy leaning against the bar. Mind you, I haven't found, I haven't been thinking about being attracted to anyone or whatever, no? And I see this guy, I can still remember what he was wearing. And he was leaning against the bar watching uh, Sal performing. And I went, who is that? Wow. You know, it was like that, right? So I sit down and I'm talking. And one of the girls, uh, Fe, spoke to me in Cebuano. And then somebody goes, don't you speak Cebuano? I said, yeah, I do. Do you know Benito Miranda? And I said, uh, it was the name of the person I talked to on Monday. Kita mo, may, may gusto ka nga. Kasi Monday yun, dapat nakalimutan mo na yung pangalan. Friday na to eh. Right. And so, <laughs> he says, do you, do, you, do you know Benito Miranda? And for some reason, I knew it was the guy at the bar. <laughs> I just kind of knew it was him, right? Because he was a new face <laughs> there. So when they said, ladies and gentlemen, singer from the Philippines, rah, 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 Becca Godinez, I could have walked there. No, 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 no. I walked right in front of Benito. <laughs> I went and I sang my song and then I walked right by him again to sit down. He didn't say hi, nothing. <laughs> so I went, okay. <laughs> then I saw him coming now. He was going to leave now, no? And he didn't, didn't say hi, I'm the one who talked to you. Nothing, wala, tepok. So he held my shoulder as if to say goodbye and left. I said, okay, that's was- smooth. <laughs> but boy, did that burn. Of course. That hand that held diba? my shoulder. Talagang Sim- apoy. <laughs> simple pero rock. <laughs> but it took a while for us to. Wait, wait, wait. What was the next encounter after that? Um, with the group. You know, we would meet as a group, as a group. As, and he was dating other people. So I said, you know, that's never going to happen. And I was still. I was still hurting, you know, from the divorce. Apparently, he was also newly divorced. And then for one reason or another, we ended up in Kalesa. And he said, you know, I want to take you out. So he, he said, so on and so date. So I was waiting in the office. Ala, walang tawag, walang whatever. Then the next time he called, I said, you owe me an apology. And he goes, what? What? you know, and I said, you asked me to go out with you and you completely forgot. Oh, my God. You know, no, I'll take you out. I'll take you out. I said, no, you don't have to take me out. He says, no, I'll take you out. Sabi niya, let's have lunch. I said, unless I have a written invitation from you, I am not going out with you. I received a written invitation and I still have it. Oh. It's our first, it was our first date. Yeah. Bira Poretti in uh, South Coast Plaza Mall. Both of you speak Spanish. Yes. And Cebuano. What, what, what are the chances, Diva? Yeah. That's why I said when when they heard me say something in Cebuano, they go, "Do you know Benito Miranda?" Because of Cebuano. So lahat ng lenguaje pare pareho nyo alam Spanish, English, Pero ako, Cebuano. I also do Portuguese, Tagalog? which he does not. Oh. I do Portuguese because of Morris. Right. So I do Portuguese. I actually tried Japanese. It's hard, it's a very simple form language, yeah. but unless you speak, you know you you right. forget. Right. And so most of the time I'm going wakarimasen. I don't understand, you know, <laughs> because, yeah. yeah, because, because if you don't practice, you don't, and my, my Portuguese is not as, as good as it used to be, mm. you know, because I don't use it as often. And very different the Portuguese and the Spanish. Uh, they don't, Actually, same root. But they don't connect, eh, no? Um, let's say, como vai? Tudo bem com você? Como, est, como va? Como estás? Está todo bien con usted? So there's a, there's a, it's, como it's, se va? It sounds French. similar. Yeah. It's like Port- it's like, it's like Indonesian and Tagalog. Pareho mi. There's a Malay base. A Malay base, yes. yes. Parang ganon uh-uh, yung dating. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Pero pag ha. Huh? Yeah. So between my mom and I, we do Tagalog, English, and Spanish. Uh-huh. Sometimes I say something to her, Mama, as tomau tu te, which is tea, right? As tomau tu te, te ke? As tomau tu te, huh? Chaa, ininumo na ba yung chaa mo? You know, we we have to go through that, you know, so we go through yung cha'a. Lain no bueno ba yung cha'a, you know, and things like that. You know, we just it's funny. But so so with with going back to Benito, when did you know that it was time to to um close the Oh, he mistreated me. 
Um, we went out on a date one time. Kawawa naman si Benito. No? Walang kalaban-laban. We went out on a date. We went out on a date. And he got a phone call. Got a beeper. And he walked away. And he got a phone call. And then it was time to leave. He just wanted to leave. you know. So we ended up meeting with some friends. And one of the girls comes over and says, Benito, you're invited to go to the house. I won't say who it was. No, sa -da 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 -da. And walked past me. And this guy says, okay, drop me home and went. Uh, would you not suck suck him? Hello, diba? So that kind of messed up the relationship for for several months, and then it just kind of came together again. And I said some truths to him that I am I don't lie, I don't create stories, you know, because I was getting a lot of stuff uh, from other sources. And I just said, you know, it's sad we could have been good friends, but we should have been friends first, you know, blah blah blah. And then he called about maybe two or three days later, and then he said, I have to pick up my daughter. Because he's divorced, no? He says, I have to pick up my daughter in Montana. And he said, will you be able to help me with her schedule? Mm. You know, like, yeah. if I picked her up before he, you know, so it kind of worked out and we started to work out a schedule together. And then, um, one, <laughs> sorry, Benitz. <laughs> so one day, he calls and we're talking, talking, and he goes, yeah, well, but I'm going to go with women and la, 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 whatever. He was he was trying to, like, you know. Uh, and then I said, Benito, have you not realized yet that you're going to end up with me anyway? <laughs> I said, you know, you've already compared me to your mom twice. Uh, that's diba? a sign. That's oh. a sign, yeah. Sabi ko, you're not going to find another one like me. Sabi at the silence, sa kabila. Tapos sabi niya, why did my stomach hurt? <laughs> So um, he invited me to the wedding of a niece. And he is not subtle, huh? I did not go and meet two or three relatives. Yung buong Angkan. lahat nandun. And the matriarch came to me. And I was going, oh, Heavenly Father, please, Lord. And she goes, you know, I used to hang out with your tita in Cebu. And kabarkada pala ng tita ko. Sabi ko, okay. May plano na to. Yeah. You know, God had a plan. Um, we got married in 1995. So it's it's been a ride. Grabe, 19 na, no? Magka yeah. 20 years na. 20. 1995. And then, 30. So, magka yeah, magka 30 na kami. My God. I got shortchanged there, sir. <laughs> oh, nga, 30, no? <laughs> yeah. Oo. Oh. Galing. And the journey has not, you know, people go, ang galing naman yun. Of course there are hardships. Of course there are. You know, it's, it's, it's your, it really, boils down to your decision about whether or not you want to make it succeed. Again, and say that it really boils down to your decision. About whether or not you want it to succeed. You know? Yeah. You, you have to make a concerted effort to say, I want this marriage to work. It's not it, going to work on its own. Him. No. I, it, if it was based on him alone or on me alone, it wouldn't have worked. We decided to bow to a higher power to God. We decided that he would be correct. You know, and there are days when the argument is mine, the our argument is his, you know, and it's a matter of knowing each other. You know, I know that he has a two-day process. Kapag galit yan, two days. He hasn't been angry anymore, really. Not really. Not both of us. We've learned to apologize to each other. Oh, galing. Very inspiring. You know? Yeah. But he had, he used to have a two-day process. And then if he realized the man na siya ang nagkamali, and I go, Benita! Then he looks at me and he goes, ni 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 ni. You know, and then you just have a sense of humor. And you decide. I'm not saying that that's what it is for everybody, but that's what works for us. What advice can you give um, newlyweds or people who are thinking about getting married? Because nowadays, Wala may gusto magkaanak. Mm. True. Diba? Our daughters. Our daughters. Ayaw? Ayaw. <clears throat> Ayaw. What's up with that? What? Uh, any advice? I mean, I think have you tried the, talking the to them? The generation now, my daughter shares with me how difficult it is. You know, that they make good money, and they make, but they're still struggling. Struggling to pay the rent, struggling to, you know, etc., etc. And uh, some, some uh, reasons, some of the reasons are that they want to feel... Uh, successful as a human being and a lot of that success comes with career success 
you know, and, and finding themselves. How can I be there for someone if I'm still struggling to make myself, you know, successful, to, to find out what it is, you know, that I want. Uh, when you really decide that you want to marry someone, let it be because of something other than you and me. Yung parang ganon. Uh, the decision is sometimes he's right, sometimes you're right. Right. You know, and and there will always be those tumultuous times, but for so long as you hold on to faith, I really believe that. That's that's you know that's me. Okay. Pero if God isn't in the picture, one or the other will say I'm right. I'm right. There's no higher power that mm. is right. There's no triangle. Correct. Walang walang. Yes. You know, it's like. It's me and it's you. you. We're all we're very selfish creatures, you know. And I think I think that a a base and the basis uh, is God. Period. Faith and our relationship became much much stronger, especially when he finally he calls me. You know, uh, Pastor, who is he? Benito, the one in San Diego. Dr. David Jeremiah. You know what David Jeremiah said today? He'll call me and he'll tell me and then, okay, bye, click. Sometimes he doesn't really want to hear what I say, what I have to say. He'll just tell me what he learned and I'm happy. I'm happy that there is a joy now. The Bible's become alive for him. You know, it, it was alive for me in the 80s, mm. you know, into the night. I mean, I, I actually did you know, music ministry trips, you know, yeah. to Manila and all of that. Um, I don't, I can't, you know. Uh, so there are just different stages in life where you just decide, is this because I'm not worthy? Is it because I'm not working hard? Or is it you, Lord? Have you put me on the shelf? Because there is such a thing. Sometimes he'll put you on the shelf for you to just sit down, rest, lick your wounds, whatever it is, and you can see the world. But it's not yeah. that he's taken you away from the world. It's because he's giving you time to rest, you know, and to, and to just kind of lick your wounds if that's what you need or just take a breather and that's basically what happened to me last year so what sustained me god is so wise what, what sustained me were all the film festivals because i had never done film so i was stuck willingly in the house <laughs> no because it's care right so um i was i was mostly housebound um with challenges because the deterioration with the age no and um, when he gave me the film, I was enjoying art still in the sense that several months there was a film festival and then a film festival and then a film. So it, 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 it just, whew, sarap, you know, I was still artistic in a way. And then uh, in one of the interview Q&A after the film, they said, what do you do outside of film? And so I shared that I do the sausages and the children and everybody cracked up, I made them laugh. And then uh, I said, um, I want to write a musical, which I intend to do. And then I said, towards the end of the year, and this was last year, towards the end of the year, I hope to do a concert. And which I am, I'm gonna, I, I when? just gelled it November, first weekend. <clears throat> so I just gelled it today, actually with Ted. Um, yeah, so that that's happening. And then the musical, it's starting to... I've been writing songs since, I don't know, 2012, 2013. 2015, to show you how long it's been making Kuro. Yeah. Um, Junix Inosyan mm. uh, is a phenomenal theater artist from rep. He's one of the artists that made it to Saigon in London, and he stayed there. So in 2015, Benito and I decided that we would celebrate our anniversary in London. And I got in touch with John John Briones and I said, John John, please, whatever it is, however much it costs, I want front and center. Wow. Sabi ko, you know, we'll pay for it. That's why I'm going to go because I want to see you. Yeah, I was hearing so many good things about John John. And the person that I knew more than John was Junix. And Junix was, he was getting TV series, but you know, and dami niyang ginagawa. So on March 17, which was Junix's birthday, minus 16, right? yeah. Junix, we went out for lunch. John John joined us. We had lunch. And then I said, what is the matter in Sabuano? No, I said, unsa man ka? Na unsa man na? I said, you know, because he was always so jovial, see Junix. And I remember telling him, you know, Junix, I've been trying to write this musical and you are in it. And he would be the voice of reason. He would be the chorus. He would be, you know, this was how I was envisioning him. And he goes, so sige, sige, I mean, I mean. But I said, what's the matter with you? You're so morose. 
you know, why aren't you laughing? Why you? And he said, I don't know. I can't seem to shake this flu feeling no, that I have. And he, and he says, I just, it, it's make me. So we left London, came back. In three weeks, Junix was gone. Apparently, um, his brain had oh, wow. a, it had a bleed in it. But the reason that this was important to me recently is because I remember how long it's been since I've had this this idea, this desire to write a musical, and I really want to. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. I'm getting started. What I did was I collected ang dami ko palang inumpisahang kanta. You know, I forgot. Wow. Oh, yung maliit pa na iPhone. Yes. <laughs> You know, I just record and record and record. So at some point between now and whenever, I'm going to put it all together. You know, I, I don't have the luxury right now of saying, well, I'm going to take classes, you know, and I'm going to, which I would love to if it, if it was a skill that I could learn and pay for. Some right. friends of mine see um, Jennifer Pass and her yeah. husband, Oh my gosh, they're in Connecticut with uh, in in doing a musical thing with Mercer. Are they there now? They're there now. Oh wow. You know, and so that's a blessing. Mm. Pero I don't know that I would have that, but I also feel uh empowered by years of experience doing production, doing directing, doing musicals, you know, things like that. So and dami kong gustong gawin. Wait, okay, you, you know maganda yung sinabi mo, madami kang gustong gawin. Because while while you're sharing all of this in my head, I'm like, wow, you've, your catalog stems from <clears throat> pre-martial law mm -hmm. all the way to 2024. And kulang pa. Kulang pa. I don't, I don't feel I've reached the end. My dad used to say, Becca, Becca, when are you going to be happy already with what you're doing? You're doing I go, Dad, it doesn't feel like I've done, you know, what I'm supposed to be doing yet. You know, he used to say, when are you going to be happy with this? You know, and blah, blah, blah. I just don't feel that God has given me a limit. You know, I, I, I am not fearful of trying something new. If it fails, I failed, right? But unless I know that it failed, I'm still going to be going... Would I have done well? Would I have, you know? And I'm not going for something naman na hindi ko kaya, you know? I go, I, I'm, I'm, I'm designing, or it is being designed for me uh, with the knowledge that there is enough smarts, you know, in, into putting this yeah. together so that I, I'm not so sold on myself that I would not at some future listen to someone saying, Becca, you, you should cut that scene out or you can, you know, I'm not, there, there has to be a sense of humility also, Yes, you know, but the sense of confidence that I have stems from all of the experiences that I've had in directing in acting in singing now films, you know, I mean, it just expands your horizon. Eh? So limitless ang kayang gawin ng tao if they're willing to, to try, I, I feel. Okay, that's a personal. <clears throat> okay, Ito, um, there are people who cling to what they have, thinking it it will fly away if they let go. Let go. You're the opposite. Yes, I am. <laughs> Tama ba? Yes. Is that by habit, by mindset, by choice? Siguro all of the above. I am not afraid to reinvent myself. Uh, I, I seek adventure and it doesn't necessarily have to be jumping off a plane or something like that. But, you know, uh, God did not limit you. You know, it's, you, you open yourself up to a universe of gifts if you open yourself to that, you know. And I believe that a good heart, you have to start with a good heart. My dad used to say, uh, things can be accomplished between two people of goodwill. You know, whether it be in business or whether, you know, uh, the desire is to do something that is good. You know, it's not something that will take away from someone. Mm. So your creativity is, is wide open. No one can say, ito lang kasi ang kaya mo. You know, it, it, maybe it's true. Maybe there's just a certain amount of something that you can do, but you can expand from that. I feel that I have been gifted by God with experience in corporate work, experience in musical, in theatrical, in production, in composing, you know, all of that. And it's like, why am I going to stop it from flourishing? <laughs> yeah. Diba? Binigay sa'yo yung gift eh. So, 
why are you going to limit the limitless possibilities? I mean, I'm not so proud as to say, oop, I failed that one badly. You know, I, I'm not going to be too proud to say, mm, I shouldn't try that anymore. You know, but for so long as I feel that there is a thrust, you know, towards something na kaya ko talagang gawin, tapos it brings me joy, yeah. and that it will honor, give honor uh, to those who came before me and to those who might be listening, you know, and it might give people an opportunity to perform or to, you know, I will do it. What is your greatest accomplishment? God. Among Kaling, no? Did I interrupt you? Sorry. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, without him, I'm zero. Zero. You know, I mean, there were times when I thought, I'm so it, you know. Um, but no, it's really, it's, it's really the fact that I know there is a God, you know, who is Alpha Omega, you know, no beginning. no, And we, we can't even grasp, yeah. you know, that idea. Uh, but I have experienced enough to know that his presence is there. When I was being wheeled down uh, from the room, when my heart stopped, right. I was being wheeled down to the cath lab. It's five stories, right? And there, was, there were two men running, you know, to bring me down because my heart was failing. And uh, so there was an emergency in the hospital. And first floor, I was like, because the, the girl said, keep your eyes open, right? I didn't know what she meant. The last thing I heard leaving the door was, she's gray. She's gray. In other words, I was dying, right? Yeah. I didn't know. Um, and so on the first so first floor, Sabiko, excuse me, please, can I just close my eyes, Sabiko? Humihingi ako, no? He really stopped the gurney and he turned around, you know? He looked like the Dutch boy. Yung, <laughs> that's all I could remember. He looks like the Dutch boy, the painter. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, loud. Keep your eyes open. If you close your eyes, you'll never open them again. Talaga? Oh, ganun kalapit. And how funny because it was at that moment that I said, Jesus, Father God, please give me strength. Just give me strength, Lord. And I felt this surge. You know, this this crazy husband of mine said, did you see the tunnel? Yun ang tanong niya, did you see the tunnel? No. I felt extreme peace. Yung parang I was just gonna sleep. Pala na mamatay na ako. I didn't know, no? And so when I said, Father God, Jesus, please, no? And I felt this, just a very small, enough, you know, to get me to the cath lab. Yeah. And then crazy, of course I'm crazy sometimes. <laughs> I go in there and I knew I'm gonna have to get naked, you right. know, and all of this. I get in there and it's all men. I said, Lord naman, bakit ngayon pa ako huhubad? Ang guwapo-guwapo nitong mga lalaki dito. <laughs> you know? Um, Kung kela. Ay, nako. I, so, um, you know, I had to sign some papers. I remember very briefly, then they ran me in. And then uh, they said, Rebecca, I can't put you down uh, under completely. It's going to be like twilight. And he said, I'm going to have to put wires through your groin yeah. up to your heart. And he says, you will hurt. But I was so delirious na siguro, hindi ko alam. Pero talagang, you know, uh, I just I just wanted to breathe, you know. And so I, I remember hearing bits and pieces where, you know, they were, and I go, Aah! and I would feel, you know. Kasi nasa loob ng vein eh. Yeah, ah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, but, yeah. So anyway, so finally, after a while, I'm hearing, it's not going in, it's not, not going in. So he says, Rebecca, I have to pull it back out. And oh start, my God! Start somewhere else. What are you gonna say? The guy's trying to save your life. Although the the saving of the life, all of that was a blur. I wasn't really thinking I'm gonna die. I I didn't go there. You know, I just thought something bad had happened. So um, after a while, I just remember he said, "Rebecca, can you breathe?" And I was breathing, and I said yes. He goes, "Okay." He said, "You're going to the ICU." I'll see you tomorrow. And then we're putting a permanent one on Friday. So that was a temporary pacemaker. Temporary. Nilagay na. Yeah. Going through the vein. And I just, I, it must have been more painful than I knew. You know, and if, if I was supposed to have felt a lot of pain, God certainly put his hand over and said, okay, you know what? You're not going to feel everything. You know? And so, yeah, that was, that was a scary moment. 
that when I fell and I bukol na ganito, you know, and and I talk about it now not because oh pity me, no, because God's faithful. Do you know what I was doing before the second? Because it's second time nayon that that fo- I fell the day before. I ended up in ER. They sent me home. Kung wala sila nakita. Supposedly, because oh. EKG, pala yeah. ang, ang atrium of the heart is where it was, and the EKG would not have picked it up. Are supposedly, you... yeah. So he sent me home, uh, and then the next day it was um, Passover. So I got a red scarf, no, and I went to the front door and I said, "Lord, please pass over my house." That's what he did. How significant was yeah. that, right? So I closed the door. I walk and exactly the same place where I was starting to feel dizzy the day before. I started to feel dizzy and I sat on the sofa. This time I knew to run to the sofa. Because at that time I tried to reach the and kitchen. Then, Kaya ako na, yeah. oh. So I went, Belita, the blessing was COVID. Had it not been for COVID, he would not be in the house. Mga sa Ventura. Oh, wherever he's, he's, yeah. he was supposed to be. But he was there. And I said, Benita, you know, I screamed and he came and I said, throw up, throw up. So he brought a trash can for me and then uh, he said should I call the doctor I said yes and then immediately after I said 911 I knew that it was it was bad and so you know anyway I, I give this story not to like oh what I went through no but I just totally believe that God put me through it he, he put me in it but he was gonna get me through it so that I could speak yes and, and share. Yes. Yeah, I really believe that. With regard to ano naman, with regard to, so, tapos na tayo sa career, tapos na tayo sa personal, sa love life. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Your mom is still around. Yes. She's here, you know that. Yes. She's 91. 91 years old. Still reacting to everything we're talking about. She's 91 with all of her teeth, huh? She's doing better than me. <laughs> Lahat ng ngipin. And, you know, she's still awake, by the way. Huh? Yeah, she's supposed to be sleeping now. Mommy, huh? we're talking about you. Como estas? That's bien, okay. How does it feel? Does it make you feel like a kid to still have your mom around? Because I lost my mom when I was 20. Um, I allow myself sometimes to say, quien soy yo, who am I, you know, and, and all of that. But there's been a role reversal. So, you know, she cared for us so much. And so I am now... The caregiver. the caregiver and there's nothing that can convince me to do otherwise because this has been a beautiful woman you know and she's sadly losing some of her you know motor sex. skills ADLs uh, completo pa rin, hindi. Completo pa rin. it's the memory okay. you know um, but her laughter you know because the the, the illness can go either way yeah. mean or sweet and she's Totally sweet. Totally sweet. She laughs. You know, she loves to laugh. And it's a joy. I mean, there are challenges. For heaven's sakes, you know, it's challenging. I have had to learn in the last five years. It's been five years, you know. Uh, and it's it's progressing. Oh. But because of, of being able to handle certain challenges, I get better. And I just sit there and go, Lord, you would not have given this to me if I, you didn't believe that I am the one that can handle this. You know, uh, my sister Pam is there, but she had to move further away. And then my brother William is all the way down right. in Orange County. So talagang hindi kaya. And Jaime, of course, is in Manila. So it fell on us. And this person that I'm married to, he's a saint. You know, he loves her as his own he's lost his mom so he loves her as his own and then he teases her and she goes ah! <laughs> and she just she just dies laughing so it's the three of you that lives a house Bye. my daughter lives in redondo so it's not too too far but she's teaching what a sitcom no? yeah <laughs> yes um we were she fell uh and i know this is personal but you know for those who know what this is yeah. all about uh, she fell last week. We ended up at the ER until like 11 o'clock at night and the doctor came after x-rays and he said she didn't break anything. And I was like, I just wept, right? But he said she has a contusion in the back and that's what causes her pain. But it's getting diminished. Yeah. Today we were at, the, at her doctor and the doctor said, you just have to sit it out. 
you know, it's a two to six week process right. for the muscle to heal. No more in bawal na medicine, bigyan ng Tylenol and all that. Tylenol doesn't even work. Oh. Uh, that's how strong wow. the, the pain is. So she <laughs> takes a different, stronger medication. Um, but I have been doing it thankfully correctly. And our famous Salon Pass. Yes! It's, I mean, I, I go to the ER and the doctor takes a look at her and goes, oh, you did well. Parang na white flower. Cebu, Cebu made white flower. Yeah, then. I don't have that. But, you know, lidocaine. Lidocaine. You can oh. have lidocaine. Um, but she is a joy and she's beautiful, you know, and she's still a little, um, has a little vanity left. <laughs> but I dress her and I put makeup on her and I comb her hair and, you know, it's just, it's an honor. It's an honor. You know, it's, 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 it takes a lot sometimes. It takes a lot. Uh, there are other things that happen that I just go, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? You know? Really? And your, yeah. yeah. And your private life is gone. You know? I mean, your, your capacity to just take off and yeah. go wherever. So I bring her with me everywhere, inclusive of my, my medical appointments. I go, I'm bring, wow. Yeah, I have permission. <laughs> Every one of my doctors know if I walk in, I'm walking in with her. You know, and they're patient. They know, you know, so they allow her in the room. Would would the old Becca be thinking and speaking the way you are right now? No, I, there, there, there's really no way of predicting or knowing what's in store for your life. You know, in 2017, we chose to bring her here because she was alone. You know, she had a yaya, she had the driver, and then my sister and I were Right. you know and it after a while it just wasn't possible anymore so we brought her here we kind of fibbed and said you know you're coming on vacation come to man six months you know not just three but the desire was really for her to already stay and after about three months <laughs> she's not listening anymore uh, yeah we did and what happened <coughs> is my mom had a b1 b2 right. business uh, tourist and under the b1 I was allowed to request for her yaya to come. Okay. So I drafted the legal stuff, you know, and I worked on the legal stuff with U.S. immigration, with Philippine, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And um, successfully got the yaya to come for a year. Wow. You know, and we didn't want to do anything on Yung Tagalib. Yes. So after a year, she left. And she also was missing her kids and her grandkids. So she left. But it was enough so that Mom got used to the environment. Yung transition, yes. no? Yeah. Hindi mahirap yung transition sa kanya. Tsaka sa Manila kasi lahat, naku, nakakandado. Fort Milagros. Lahat may kandado, may, you know, and all of that. And over here, it took it took a while for her to say, you know, we would say, don't get near the door. That's Benito's responsibility. You know, she'd look out the window and all that. <laughs> it didn't take very long because after a while, she knew that she could walk to the kitchen and the den, you know, and, and she was home. So she's been with us now for six years. So let's end it here. Huh? Sige. How are you? I am... Wait, let me, let me backtrack and really think about that. How am I? I really cannot think of any other word other than blessed. My life is blessed. It is not devoid of challenges but every experience that i've gone through even the negative ones have taught me to become becca today and this becca who bows at the feet of god is amazingly blessed ladies and gentlemen miss becca godinez <laughs> We'll post the link in the description below. Please don't please support local, support their business. Thank you. I'm excited na ako. Ano ko na ako sa nakupupunta pagkatapos itong episode na to. Take care guys. <laughs>